The Warrior football team entered the second half of its season with a whole lot of confidence and a four-game win streak. At that point, UH led the nation in total offense, and Cole Brennan earned a spot on the Heisman Trophy watch list. The Hawaii Bowl berth was just two wins away. Turns out that postseason invitation came sooner rather than later. Idaho's visit to Hawaii also marks another defining moment in the West. Oh, man, it's Warrior time. We're getting ready, baby. It's homecoming. Warrior time. Get ready, baby. A victory over the Vandals would mean sole possession of second place in the WAC, and the Warriors wasted no time getting it. Ross Dickerson returned the opening kickoff 100 yards, and Hawaii never looked back. Cole Brennan threw five touchdowns to five different receivers, including Ryan Grace Mullen, who got emotional in the end zone. This game marked his return after a month on the sidelines with an ankle sprain. I couldn't do nothing else but drop down to my knees and start praying right there on the spot, start thanking him for you know, for, for keeping my head strong through this whole thing. Um, and Lord knows I prayed every single day. The Warriors' defense was also blessed with a stingy game plan on homecoming night. UH held Idaho to just one touchdown. We really want to show when people look at paper that our defense is not a defense that just get ran over and our offense outscores them. We want to make let them know that when we come to play, our defense is going to play hard. Former NFL coach Dennis Erickson and his Vandals suffered their worst loss of the season. 68 to 10. A Hawaii Bowl invitation was on the line in the Warriors' final road game at Utah State. That was enough motivation for Colt Brennan and company. Brennan's six touchdown performance earned him National Player of the Week honors. He also moved past Timmy Chang for the UH single season record at 39 touchdown passes. It just goes to show that the playmaking and my receivers and running backs today just they, they opened it up for us early on and got us the confidence in the in the touchdowns and we could close out and win. Hawaii's defense took care of the rest. UH only allowed Utah State one touchdown and forced four turnovers in the 63 to 10 blowout. It's my honor to invite you to play in the 2006 Sheraton Hawaii Bowl on Christmas Eve. With that, Hawaii became the first school in the country to score a bowl berth. With its postseason plans in place, Hawaii got back to business versus La Tech. After the first quarter, UH scored 52 unanswered. When these guys get it going in this offense, it's just scary. And uh, I'll be very surprised if somebody shuts them down. And the other thing, it seems like a freaking games last forever. Hawaii's D also got physical, racking up a season-high five sacks and six quarterback hurries. Bulldogs fell hard, 61-17. to It was the fourth time the nation's top scoring offense scored at least 60 points. Colt Brennan, now a Heisman hopeful, threw for 406 yards and four TDs. The storyline for Hawaii's WAC season finale had a lot to do with the sidelines. June Jones faced off with the man who gave him his first coaching job at the University of Hawaii, local legend Dick Tomey. San Jose State arrived with the nation's 10th best rushing attack and left with barely anything to show for it. The Spartans managed only 82 yards on the ground. You know, frankly, I was I was as impressed with their defense as anything. I thought, you know, very good offensive team, but kind of the same offensive team they were last year. But I thought defensively, a huge difference. Major, major difference. Mel Purcell was a difference maker. The defensive end earned whack honors with eight tackles, a forced fumble, and two and a half sacks. Colt Brennan also stacked his stats, throwing five TD passes. Hawaii's 54-17 win over San Jose State led to a second-place finish in the WAC. It also made waves across the Pacific. Both the Associated Press and Coaches Poll recognized UH at number 25. It was the Warriors' first national ranking in the AP since 1993. A big test came with the Big Ten as Hawaii and Purdue met for the very first time. The Warriors certainly liked their chances thanks to two TD runs by Nate Ilawa, who ran for a career best 159 yards. UH was up 17-0 at the half. But after the break, the Warriors made mistakes. Two UH fumbles turned into two Purdue scores, and Hawaii was eventually forced to play catch-up. And a lot of those times when you lose those games because you buckle. Well, tonight we got put in that situation, and this team straight ra rose to the occasion when it mattered most. So when, when I look at it, yeah, it's a statement. With four lead changes in the final quarter, who had the ball last was crucial. With less than three minutes left, Gerard Lewis intercepted Curtis Painter. The takeaway turned into a seven-point lead when Cole Brennan hit Ian Sample for a 23-yard score. 
Purdue had one more drive, but Adam Leonard put an end to it with his pick in the final minute. We lost two early in the season. A game just like this, down late, and wasn't able to convert and make the points and stop them on uh, defense. So tonight was just a great win for our, our team. It was also a great showing by the Warrior faithful. And the crowd, man, I can't say enough. The crowd, the fans, the crowd won the game for us, actually. A roaring crowd of 44,000 helped UH edge out Purdue 42 to 35. Even better, this was the Warriors' school record ninth win in a row. Oregon State and former UH offensive line coach Mike Cavanaugh came to Halava well aware of Hawaii's success. The Beavers also had to deal with a full house of 50,000 at the Aloha Stadium. But OSU stayed focused on Colt Brennan. The Beavers hounded him all night long, sacking him six times, more than any other UH opponent in 2006. They're a really good team, you know, watching them on film and things. and. Uh... You know, just we, we tried our hardest. While Hawaii never punted, missed field goals and two interceptions proved to be costly. After trailing by 11 in the fourth quarter, Hawaii had a chance to take the lead in the closing minute. But Brennan's pass on fourth down was just short. I mean, yeah, you know, that last one, if I could have it back, I would have it back in a million years. I could have easily made the pass. I just rushed it. It's a game of inches. If I just would have stepped up and threw a better ball, it would have been fine. Needless to say, the 35-32 to 32 loss on senior night was not the career send-off 18 Warriors were hoping for. You know, there's a little light at the end of the tunnel. There's another game that we could play, and um, it just wouldn't be right if we left the field like this. Angry and focused, the Warriors took the field on Christmas Eve with so much on the line. A Hawaii Bowl victory would move June Jones past Dick Tomey on the school's all-time wins list and cement this year's squad as one of the best UH teams ever. Plus, let's not forget, Brennan had his sights set on a national record. Trying to make a play here, thrown back against his body and it's dropped. Sample was wide open. But early on, nothing clicked. The Sun Devils sacked Brennan three times and kept Hawaii out of the end zone in the first half. The Warriors trailed 10 to three at the break. We talked a lot. We talked a lot at halftime, telling Coach what we saw and what was going on. And we came out in the second half. He made those little adjustments, and it's just pretty much downhill from there. The adjustments worked. Colton Company went off. Brennan finished with 559 yards passing, and Jason Rivers racked up 308 yards receiving, the most ever in a Division I bowl game. The end result, a 41-24 victory. We did on them like we did on any defense in the WAC, so it's got nothing to do with who we play. You watched us tonight against Pac-10, you know, BCS-type schools, and, and we showed how good we really were, and um, I'm just glad that now we can walk away with the respect that we've been trying to get all year. It wasn't just respect, they got the numbers. June Jones became the winningest coach in UH history with his 65th victory. The Warriors tied a school record with 11 W's, and Brennan broke the NCAA single-season TD record with 58. If you watch Ryan Grice Mullen or if you watch Jason Rivers or Nady Lau out there, you can see I had, a, I had a good company all year, and there's a reason that record got broke. But when it really came down to it, it wasn't about the records, regaining their national ranking, or even impressing NFL scouts. The motivation was much simpler. It wasn't about thinking about how I'm going to do in the game. It was about if we're going to get a win. Because I really wanted these seniors to, you know, and myself to, to end it off with a win. Hawaii finished the year ranked 24th in the coaches' poll, but was snubbed by the Associated Press. And yet, the Warriors needed no more validation than what they'd already accomplished. After all, 2006 was a season to remember. to come, Coach June Jones grades out the season. JJ is here to put a stamp on 2006 and look ahead to what he's got in 2007. You're watching Warrior Football